I'm Angela Johnson and I can't wait to show you the Craft Consortium decoupage papers. These are really exciting when it comes to home decor projects or even just covering a box, covering a book and getting a really perfect finish every time. And what's unique about these, they've got lots of different designs that coordinate with some cardstocks that you may have in your collection, but each pack has three sheets. Each sheet is 35 by 40 centimetres and each sheet has some really special qualities. What you'll notice about this is it's got a slight sheen to it and it's super strong decoupage paper. You can tear it, you can use it as large sheets. I'm going to show you lots of techniques and we'll look at some of the tools that I'm going to use in order for us to complete some projects. But one thing is, it's transformational. You can even use these on furniture. So starting with what brushes do I use? Well actually Craft Consortium has some really good brushes to work with. The first thing you'll notice about the brushes is that they're, they're quite stubby looking and that's they don't splay too much, they don't spread the glue too much. So these are specially designed to use with the decoupage glue that we are going to use. And in fact you know decoupage is the art of covering up with pieces of paper or cut out images to transform either a, a piece of furniture or, or as we would be doing it like a home decor project and it's been around for centuries but this is really up-to-date papers techniques and tools that are going to make the job really easy so what's brought decoupage right up to date for us today is that craft consortium also have decoupage glue now in the olden days they used to use layers of varnish in between the decoupage and on top of the decoupage to harden it well actually varnish isn't water based really messy and it's got a lot of smell to it um, not very comfortable to craft with that's for sure these are water based and you get two pots that one has the matte finish and the other one has a gloss finish. I like the gloss finish one, especially if it's going to be somewhere that reflects light and you really want to get that shiny look to your, your project. But let's have a look at a couple of projects that I've made. This lovely box here, you can see that I've used the lovely Craft Consortium papers, but there's no joins. You can't see any of the papers have been torn because in fact, that is one whole sheet. Because what's special about these papers is they're so super strong that they actually enable you to use them as a whole sheet or you can tear them into pieces if you choose. So when I'm decorating a box like this, it really does give such a lovely finish, but there isn't one bobble, one ripple, one tear mark. It looks as if it's embodied into the box. So I'm really pleased with that finish and I just added some extra embellishments around the outside, ribbons from Crafts Consortium. There's a pretty special box, isn't it? Very nice to receive that for a gift, wouldn't it be? Should we get crafting? Let's get decoupage. So I thought it would be nice to do a project with three letters, beginning with M. Hmm, any guesses? Shall I give you a clue? We've got an M. We've got a U and we've got another M. So it's a really nice project to do. These MDF letters are really affordable, but they don't look that exciting. So the first thing I've done is I've just used a bit of kitchen sponge and I've just gone over with some white chalk paint or acrylic paint. And that just gives me a base to work on because it lightens up that um, MDF and it also gives me better adhesion with my glue and my decoupage papers. So I'm going to start with the first M and the papers I've chosen are called Summer Garden but there are lots of lovely decoupage papers to use. Every one of the sheets from Craft Consortium are 35 by 40 centimetres. When you open them up, so that's actually quite a large sheet and they have a lovely, lovely sheen to them. But the one thing they are, this is a bit extreme, they're super strong. They really are so craftable and they're super strong which means I can use them in larger pieces. I don't have to tear them into small pieces. So first thing I'm going to do is lay on my, my letter, work out about what size I need and I can tear it but I can also tear 
against a ruler if I choose. There's lots of different ways of using these papers. So I know this is the size I want to go. So using a ruler, I can tear along. And you always work better in decoupage, rather than using a pair of scissors, always working better with a torn edge than a real edge. So I can put the rest of the paper to the side. I don't want to get any glue on that. And then I'm going to work out the rest of the size. So I'm going to do the whole front of the M in one sheet and I'm going to do the back in one sheet. So it's about that size and I want that size again. So I'm going down the end because I want to get exactly the same design and I'm going to tear that across. Now one of the beauties of this paper is you don't just have to tear it with a ruler. In fact, it tears beautifully strip by strip. It allows you to create strips because it has such a beautiful weave to it that I can create really craftable strips, especially when you're doing something like lettering. That has a completely different way of tearing and it still is super, super strong. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that large piece that I know it's going to go right over that whole letter M. I'm going to take my decoupage glue and I'm going to work with the mat because I really don't want any sheen on this one this occasion. And take one of the brushes and all you do is put the glue onto the project, not onto the paper, onto the project. And I'm going to put the first coat on. Now depending how hot it is, if you were sitting in the garden, middle of a sunny day, this will dry quickly and you'd probably have to put a couple of coats on. But because I'm in home and I'm in studio, it's not that hot here, the lights aren't too hot, this should stay wet enough, long enough for me to add the paper on top. And the next thing you need is your fingers. Because you place it on top, make sure it's covered the whole area and just go round with your fingers. I don't use a brayer, it's not necessary. But just go round every single section with my fingers and then I'm going to turn the project over and do exactly the same on the back. Got the piece cut out, round I go. And it's so lovely too. This is such a simple way of crafting but you transform something as simple as a piece of MDF into something that will be treasured because you made it. And you know, people put lights on these, you do lots of wonderful creative things with lettering these days. But having this lovely way of working, do you see I lifted that up? Let me show you something about these papers. I can lift up the whole piece and I can say, oh, I didn't put enough glue, or oh, I didn't want to use that piece there. You can go again because they're super strong. They don't tear even when they've got some glue on them. I can go again. I can place it back. It hasn't stretched. It hasn't changed. Press it down. And even if you did feel you got a piece a bit wrong, you saw you got liftability there. Obviously, if you leave it for five minutes, you wouldn't be able to lift it off like I did. But just leave that now. Just want that to dry a little bit before I do the next technique. So I'm going to move to my next letter. My next letter is U. I could use strips to do this, but it still is quite a nice flat surface. So I think I'm going to go again and just use my sheets, but this time I'll tear it. So I look at this and I think, well, actually that front panel is the right size. So I can just tear down my decoupage sheet. I know I've got a front and a back, so I'll tear it again. I'll take my glue again. Look how quick we are getting to create our finished project. In order to get all the edges looking good afterwards once it's dried, I have two techniques. I either use a sanding block or I use a craft knife. And sometimes I use a craft knife and then a sanding block. So we'll go through all those different techniques with you today. But we'll put on our next. Notice I'm not really worrying where's my up and my down. Maybe I might think, oh, that's round the wrong way. Just add a bit more glue, go again. Don't try and do the end bits at the same time. You'll get yourself in a bit of a pickle because it's not everything is always square. 
So I find you always do your flat surfaces flat. Make sure you've got right into all the little edges of the letter. And then turn it over. Same thing again on the back. And it's such a relaxing. You know, I listen to music when I do this at home. I do sing sometimes, so I promise not to sing, put you off today. But think around all the lovely things that you could be transforming. It's really good to do this on furniture. And you can put extra layers of the glue on top to create that protective coating. But paper like this, this would look really lovely in like a chest of drawers in the panels. It's really, really pretty. You could cover tissue boxes and, um, you know, like I had done on that vase. It's lovely to make home decor projects with such pretty, pretty papers. And you can see I'm going right to those edges there. If there's anywhere that hasn't really stuck, it's not a problem. You could just go in with some more glue afterwards. But just like I did the M, we'll put that one to the side. Well, our letters are dry now. It probably it depends what the weather's like, but it doesn't take very long. Probably about 10 minutes to let them dry, but it depends on the density of the project that you've actually attached the papers to. If it's hollow, it probably dried a lot quicker. Now, one of my favorite ways of finishing the edges is actually using sandpaper or a sanding block. And this has got quite some um, straight edges, so I'll show you straight away just by holding the sanding block at an angle, you get not just a finished edge, but you seal the papers to your project. Now, if there's any parts that aren't stuck, don't worry, you go back and take them off afterwards. But I'm going to keep the block on the paper on the craft mat so you can see what I'm doing. But just raise that up a bit so that I just raise that up a bit so that you can see what I'm doing. It's probably easier for me like this. Can you see? I love doing this because you get an absolutely true edge, a really professional finish, and all I'm doing is just using a sanding block to take away the paper that I don't need. Now there is another way and we'll look at it on the other side, just take off those bits I don't need. I'll just go around to this side and then we'll do the other side with a different technique. The other way is to take your craft knife. So going around the edges as long as it's dry, you can go around the edges of the letter and you can take away the excess using your craft knife. And then afterwards, you can sand it back if you choose. Um, I have to do this from my side, and apologies if you can't see me, but hopefully you can see me going all the way around. And I'm not being too fussy because I finish it off at the end with my sanding tool. And this way, I've got all the letter covered with paper, but the last job I'd have to do is to add a finish. So the choice you have, do you want to have a glossy finish or do you want to have a matte finish? And it depends really if the light is going to catch your project. So because your glues come in matte and glossy, you've got that choice but I don't decide until the end of my project. I go around all those edges. So now I've got cut one side and the other side I use the sanding block. To go into the centre section, I use my craft knife. And this is really easy because you just literally let the craft knife go around the edges. So wherever you had, it just leans, the craft knife automatically leans against those edges. Go around the top. Such pretty papers. Same here. And even though it's a curve, because the papers are strong, they don't tear as I'm working, they do the job beautifully. Round I go again. take off the bits I don't need and we'll come back and just finish that off with a little bit of sand but already it's really pretty. Now I couldn't have painted these roses on here 
does. That's a lovely colour combination, isn't it? Really, really pretty. I'll take that last bit out. Now you say, well, you've got the area around the outside still to cover. So let's give it a little bit of a quick sand just on those last few edges. I've got any stray bits that I missed. But there, so anywhere like there that I've missed, just sign that bit off. That will seal the edges. And remember, we had some strips that I cut right at the very beginning. I can use those strips now to go all the way around my edges, and I can completely cover the whole of my letter if I choose. Or I could paint that top white if I choose. I could paint it pink. The choice is yours how far you go. You can tear these into smaller pieces and you can put the pieces all the way along the top. We might do that. That's another way that we can now cover the rest of our letter. Once you've finished covering the whole project, give it a couple of coats with either the matte or the gloss and then that will permanently be able to be in your home. So I've got another decoupage project that I'm going to work for, a very cute elephant. Now, he's made of papier-mâché. I've given him a coat of white acrylic paint first, just to give a base to work with, because sometimes those darker um, papers, when you put them on, to, when you use a lighter paper on top of something like cardboard or brown, it doesn't quite lift as much. And I've got some lovely paper here that has got hearts on it and it's craft consortium decoupage papers it's rainbow hearts so i thought this elephant's going to look amazing in the rainbow hearts each sheet you get three sheets of each is 35 by 40 centimeters and listen to that sound these are super strong sheets they're really really craftable because they tear really well and it doesn't matter how you tear them, how you layer them, you can put them in large pieces on a project, but for my elephant, I want lots of smaller pieces. So I am just having the most wonderful, there's something very satisfying about tearing. I don't know what it is, but it makes us feel good. So I'm tearing lots of little pieces, not too small, they don't need to be too small, but they just need to be able to create a really fun rainbow heart elephant. So I'm going to use the gloss glue on my elephant because I think he'll look really lovely if he's nice and shiny and it will almost look like a mosaic. I'm going to use one of my craft consortium brushes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece that vaguely looks about the area that I'm working in. So I'm going to start with his leg and I'm going to put the glue onto the area that I'm working on and straight away add the paper. Put a little bit of the glue on the top and then go to the next sheet. And this happens quickly. It's easy to do, it's fun to do. And as you're going along, you may see some little, what you think might look like wrinkles. There might be a fold that you've gone over on the paper. The strangest thing is when this dries, it dries super smooth. There are no bubbles. There are no signs that these are actually torn pieces of paper. And in fact, look how strong this is. Even if you've done like I did there, and you want to lift it up, it doesn't tear, it gives you all the flexibility to work with the paper without tearing it. These are super strong papers. I'm not being conscious about the shape because even if, like that one, that's a triangle, it can go around the corner because these papers go around bends, they go around corners and just keep layering across my lovely, in fact, I want that one to go straight. See, I can lift it up. It's not tearing. Really is lovely and strong. I love working with these papers. Now, I'm going to give this one across here. Sometimes I work with the shape 
um, with the piece of paper that I picked up. And that looked like a really good one to put there. Whereas that's a longer one. So I might decide to put that here. You can go as random, you don't have to go in order. There's no rules, but this is fast, it's fun. And the overall finished effect is really, really effective. He's looking so cute, I'm getting my rainbow elephant. He's really coming together. But the magic happens when he dries, because when he dries, you'll see he's got a super glossy finish. And then what you do is you put two or three coats of the um, Craft Consortium Decoupage glue on top and he is totally, totally strong to leave out as a home decor project for years in your home. Hey, I think you would agree that decoupage is really fun and it, and it can be so rewarding for you at home to transform a regular, maybe a box, even an old shoe box into something that can be really treasured or used around the home. And I loved making our little elephant with all his hearts. He's my love elephant. But decorating our letters, remember how we used one sheet to get that beautiful design so we haven't changed any of the design of those beautiful roses on the front of our M for mum or N for Monday. No, that's a bit more boring. But really, I think you'll have a lot of fun with these papers. And remember, because they are super strong, you have got lots of flexibility how you use them and how you finish with them, whether you sand them, whether you use a craft knife. And just enjoy creating something special in your home.